Welcome to this short video on Network Forensic Analysis Software. My name is Tara Delaney. Now for this video we're going to use one of our own products called LandGuardian. And we're going to feed it some network traffic as a data source. So what is Network LandGuardian? Well you can use it to find security issues and network misuse. And that can range from anything to maybe somebody watching videos to ransomware on your network to some virus to some sort of suspicious looking traffic. And we can track activity by username and IP address. And not only that, but then we can drill down to granular information like usernames, file names, web domains. And we'll, we'll take a look at this in a minute on our demo. And we see it as a network data storage. So you can take a look at activity in the last couple of minutes, or you could go back and look at activity a month ago. You get visibility using traffic from a span and mirror port. So you don't need any agents. Now, if you're not familiar with a span and mirror port, just find your core switch, whatever, Cisco 6500 or Catalyst or whatever it is, and Google um, either span or mirror port for that particular switch, and you'll see lots of information about those. It's a standard feature in a managed switch. With LangGuard, again, you can download and deploy in standard hardware or put it on a hypervisor like VMware or Hyper-V. So let's get on to a LangGuardian and show you forensics in action. So I'm now logged on to a LangGuardian. Uh, first use case, I'm going to focus in on a user, user forensics. I want to find out what a particular user did on the network. So to do that, we simply on the network forensics section here, we either type in a username, and there's one pre-populated here. Um, it's an Active Directory username, so press go. A couple of things uh, before we take a look at the, the results. Um, you can change the time range here at the top. Um, I'm looking at the last hour. If you click the clock symbol here, you can select whatever time range you want. So as I said earlier, you can go back in time. Maybe you want to investigate an instant from a couple of weeks back. The LangGuardian system doesn't age data, so you're free to you know, go as far back as your disk um, storage allows. Typically, customers store you know two, three months worth of data. So what do we know about uh, Robert? Well, 41% of traffic generated by Robert's uh, devices, whether it be PCs, laptops, tablets, whatever, um, is Oracle traffic, some encrypted, some HTTP, um, and then small 1% of other types of traffic. Take a look at the right hand side, we can see what files the user is accessing on the network. So some you know images here. This is all done passively by analyzing network traffic. So we don't interfere with the file server. This information is captured from um, network packets. Further down, we can see the users running BitTorrent. Um, so they must be downloading something. I may investigate that further. Their system is also generating a network scan. And I can, again, I can click on this total and drill down. These are the websites the user is accessing. Now, let's, let's just show you the drill down in action. So for example, site here don't recognize, click on it. And then it shows us here in fact, they're watching Top Gear, so they're streaming a movie onto the network. Anything else of interest here? Nothing else. So basically, um, nothing too out of the ordinary, although the user is running BitTorrent, and there are also you know, some video streaming going on. So let's take a look at forensics when we've got an IP address. It's very, very similar. So we type in the IP address, we press go. And it's an almost identical view. Instead of the username, we're going to see IP addresses. Just wait for them to populate. And here we go. So for this IP address, 72% uh, of traffic is uh, file share, uh, some SQL traffic, and then small amounts of other stuff. Here is the, okay, file share is 12 gigabytes. So what is behind all of that? Well, really two actions. Somebody here is copying, looks like a virtual machine, which is almost six gigabytes, and also an archive file, which is 1.31 gigabytes. Again, BitTorrent, so we've got a lot of BitTorrent out on the network. We can see here, it's triggering some security events. In fact, they're on utorrent.com, so that must be the client they're using. Further down here, we can actually, in the case of BitTorrent, you can see what's called the info hash value here. So if I open that in a new tab, 
we can see that somebody's downloading Linux, so they're using BitTorrent as a way to get a um, Linux operating system downloaded. Anything else of interest? Not really. Again, a BitTorrent probably the one thing that stands out here. So that's using a search. Uh, if you want to do forensics on an IP address or on a uh, username, you can just type them into the search page here and see what's happening. Now there are other ways to approach forensics, so if you have nothing to go on, if the network is slow, if you're suspicious about malware on your network, if whatever the reasons are, you you don't have a lot to go on, then the search page might not be as useful because what do you search for? I'm not going to go to the dashboards because these gives us a view where we don't need to type anything in, it gives us a kind of all of overall kind of hell to the network. So my starting point here is management summary. So there is no filter here, this is all events, so we got some scanning, some bit turns, some logon failures. We got some information here about Nehex Force data. Actually, let's go to management summary, it's probably a better top level view. With the total amount of traffic here flowing around the network over the last uh, couple of hours, what are the most popular or most active sites users are visiting based on the amount of data? Who are the top users on the network? Um, we here we have what are the top applications? And we have the option then to drill down. So the network is slow. Well, this network may have been slow at this point here. We could simply click on the peak and take a look. So it was because somebody did a download from our own website. Let's pick something else here, Windows Update for example, let's drill down on that. So we have a number of clients downloading updates, nothing too out of the ordinary there. But what we can see is the downloads they're updating, you can even see the patch of KB890, A3O-V456, whatever, so that's the actual patch they downloaded. So if you have nothing to go on, if you want to troubleshoot something, go to the dashboards, they're pre-populated, and you can see you know, what are the top applications, who are the top users, what are the top websites people visit, what are the top security events that are being triggered on the network, and do your analysis, do your forensics from the dashboards. Final thing I want to touch on is that you can zone in on a particular um, report. For example, we looked at top events. And the reason why you might use a report is that possibly somebody's asked you for a report, you want to send it on to them. So here's a list of all events that have been triggered on this network over the last couple of, um, let's go for the last hour updated. So what we can do here is we can click on email and we can actually send this report directly on to somebody. Also with forensics, if there's something on the network that you would like to get an alert on, um, you can do that, simply mark something like uh, BitTorrent, uh, select the option here to send an email. Now, not shown here, but we can also send S um, syslog. Uh, we can send an event via SNMP, so we can send it to your um, SIM or your syslog collector. So Langardian can be your da network data store, and it can send information to other monitoring systems or other tools that you, you already have. So alerting is another important part not typically associated with forensics, but it could be the reason why you need to do some analysis if you've got an alert about something. So but this is by no means all of the features in LangGuardian when it comes to forensics, but probably the more um, commonly used ones where you search on a username and IP address or you go into a dashboard and get an overall view of what's happening on the network.